Recall the division algorithm. That says that if a is any integer and b is any positive integer, then there exist unique integers q and r with zero less than or equal to r less than b, such that a equals qb plus r. So for example, if we have a equaling 92 and b equaling 43, then we could say that 92 is equal to, and in this case, uh, 43 would go into 92 twice, and there would be a remainder of six. So in this case, we would see that Q was two, and R was six. Or how about this? A is 144, and B is 36. So in this case, we could say that 144 is equal to, and in this case, uh, 36 goes into 144 four times, and we have a remainder of zero. So in this case, we would say that Q was four and R was zero. And this is a special case when we have a remainder of zero. If R equals zero, then we say that B is a divisor of A. Okay, so here is the division algorithm one more time. And now we're gonna introduce the concept of a divisor. And we're gonna say let A and D be any two integers. And if you notice here, we're writing A equals, uh, we're gonna write A equals QD, and up here we had A equals QB. Well, we're gonna use the letter D instead of the letter B now. Uh, just because it uh, makes more sense, kind of starts with a D, just like divisor here. Uh, so this uh, is in place of the B because it's going to be a little bit different. So we let A and D be any two integers, and we say that D is a divisor of A. And we write it as D with a bar and then A. If A equals QD for some integer Q. So, for example, suppose we have 6 and 18. Well, we can say that 6 is a divisor of 18 because 18 equals 3 times 6. Or 54 is a divisor of 1,134 because 1,134 is 21 times 54. We can say that 5 is a divisor of negative 20. Remember, uh, A can be any integer. And so in this case, we're gonna let a be negative 20, and that's because negative 20 equals negative four times five. And here's where we see a little bit of a difference here. Negative three is a divisor of 27. We're gonna let d be negative also. So that's true because 27 is negative nine times negative three. If you look back up here at the uh, division algorithm, we saw that b had to be any positive integer. So for the division algorithm, b had to be a positive integer, but for the definition of a divisor, d can be any integer. So here's the definition of a divisor, and let's look at uh, trying a proof here. If a, b, and c are any integers, and if a is a divisor of b, and b is a divisor of c, then show that a is a divisor of c. Well, anytime you have uh, divisors in a proof, you always want to use the definition. In other words, we're going to turn uh, something like D is a divisor of A into an expression that looks like A equals QD for some integer Q. And you can pick any letter you want for Q here. It's just going to represent some integer. So in this case, we know that A is a divisor of B. Well, if A is a divisor of B, then we can rewrite that as B equals NA for some integer N. And similarly here we have B divides C. B is a divisor of C, so C equals MB for another integer M. Well now you can kind of see what we can do here. We have C equals MB, and we have B equals NA. So I can substitute NA in for B right here. And if I do that, then I get C equaling M times N times A, and I can just rewrite that as k times a, where k itself is an integer. And so since I've gotten c equals some integer times a, that shows that a is a divisor of c. So in general, when you're looking at proofs involving divisors, always turn an expression like a is a divisor of b into something like b equals n a for some integer n. From there, the rest of the proof should be easy to see.